Good Saturday morning, everybody. April 6th, 2024. This is Bible Talk with Carolyn B. Um, I'm glad to have you here today because I have this very special revelation to give to you guys that God gave me last night. It's all about the power of his love. I used to wonder how God could possibly love us when we are sinners. How God could possibly care for us like he does as we are toward him, the way we are toward him, which is pathetic, right? And then I used to wonder, why, how am I supposed to love my enemy's father? I, I, I just couldn't fathom how I was going to be able to love my enemies, right? And I couldn't also fathom how I was going to stop, be able to stop cursing when I get angry. When people just keep drilling in me, drilling on me, drilling a garbage, trying to drill it into me. And... It's unnecessary and it doesn't pertain to me. It's something that is not of me. It does it does not belong to me and it doesn't fit me, right? So I have the worst attitude about it. And I'm the only thing I know to do to relieve the, the pain is to cuss them out, right? And that's not Christian life. That's not anything God would do. But I'm human. And some people are really like me. And I could not for the life of me understand. How does God do this? How do we do this? How do I love my enemies and, and pray for them? Oh my goodness and pray for them. You know you guys. But I found out last night because God was talking to me. And what God said you guys was profound. God's love is so wide, so deep, so powerful, so huge. Because he's so huge. Uh, it's, he's beyond our human comprehension. But his love is so huge that it is a power. God's love is a power. It may even be his power. But I can't say that because the Holy Spirit is his spirit. And the Holy Spirit has power. I guess everything God gives love to or makes out of love has power. He made us out of love. But he didn't give us power. He didn't give humans power because we don't know how to use it, right? We would never know how to use it, even when before we had eaten off of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. We wouldn't be able to use power aright. So, I think that's the truth there. I'm not sure, but this is how I feel about it. But God's love. <laughs> Man, y'all, God's love saved me. The love of God pursued me to finally give in. It was God's love that made me give in to him. It was God's love that made me endure in through the wilderness and endure all the persecution that I've suffered. And it, it, when I'm saying this stuff, it's you too. It's this is what makes you keep going. It's the power is the power of God's love. God's love is so immense that it's got mad power. God's love is so powerful that it is a force. God's love is power and that power has a force. This is something God revealed to me last night. If you think about it, the power and the force of God's love drives everything that he wants to do. In you, through you, and around you. The force of the power 
of God's love is what makes the devil afraid. The, the devil's not afraid of how God can hurt him. The devil's afraid of God's love that can destroy him. That is going to destroy him. Remember you guys got in the Bible, in Revelation, Jesus is going to defeat the devil with a word. He's going to fight Armageddon with a word. God's power is in his word, right? So this force, this love is so strong that evil cannot penetrate it. So therefore, God's not, don't need to fight with the devil per se. All he has to do is send his love to demolish the devil. Because the devil has no part in love. The devil has no understanding of love. He has no understanding that love brings light. Love is not darkness. He, ha The devil is unable to comprehend God or God's love. Thereby going to be defeated by the love of God. If you think about it, the love of God for us is what made Jesus Christ go ahead to the cross and kill sin for us with his death. And so God was not going to leave his son dead in sin as sin. But he raised Jesus up. So that Jesus could do that job and complete it. When he resurrected Jesus, he Jesus left sin and death behind. He left it. You know, he was gone three days. He, I believe, and so do many, many other people. We know that Jesus went into hell. I don't know if Jesus went into hell as sin. Because when he died as sin, that should have been it, right? He was no longer sin. So when Jesus went down to hell to do whatever Jesus did down there. And as we know, when Jesus, after Jesus was resurrected from the dead, people saw people that had died walking the earth. That's what the Bible says. So maybe Jesus went down there and cleaned that place out. Because those people that were dead prior to his coming to the earth never had the chance to Accept or respond to the Holy Spirit that Jesus brought into the world. So maybe that's what he was doing in hell for three days and three nights. But if you think about it, death, the devil, evil can't keep the Lord because of love. Love is self-contained. It needs nothing else to keep it alive. And so, being that evil is not of love, and it has no place in love, evil can't defeat love. Love is all-encompassing. Love is all-powerful. Love is power, and love is a force. Just think about it the way I saw it last night. How the power in the force of love can drive out everything. Every evil thing that's in your life. It's going to take some doing, but I'm going to make this love power work. It's going to take a lot out of me, but I intend to please God. And do just what I have to do here on earth. So that, my friends, is what I came on here for. And I had another subject to talk about. That I knew I should come on here. But I wait for God's force. <laughs> I wait for his power. For his word to tell me, okay, it's time to do that one. But in the meantime, last night, 
When God told me, I, God didn't tell me any. He just showed me how his love is a force. He just showed it. I mean, just showed it to me. Then I grasped that I can indeed love my enemies because love is a force. It's a. It's. It's not about the enemy. It's not about them. It's about God. It's about doing the same thing God does, letting the e the sun to shine on the evil and the just. It's up when if we want to make it to God, if we in the rapture to be caught up with Jesus, we have to have this. We have to be doing this or working on this at that time. We cannot be running around here cussing, getting angry, cussing our enemies out, having sex outside of marriage, having adulterous sex, and being married. It's all too much. It's, it's all not. I'm telling you, none of it's going to go up with Jesus. None of that. I know you don't want to hear it. And that's why I'm always banished from churches. Because of the garbage that goes on in, in the churches. The evil and the justification of wrongdoing in the churches. I'm not welcome in the churches. Believe that. Because I am not one to accept that behavior. I was not in Christ for years. And then I was in Christ. And I don't want to do the things I did when I wasn't in Christ. While I'm in Christ. I never want to leave Christ. So I never want to do those things again. And that's what God. That's the example I am. For God. In a church. Anywhere. And that's the example we all ought to be. Right? So it's wrong. So wrong for a person not to be accepted in a church. Because they want to do the right thing by God. The church is God's building. His sanctuary. It's supposed to be God's sanctuary where God dwells. <laughs> That's a joke. And, and that little laugh, it just, it, it came out without, I mean, that is so pre preposterous. That the church is not about God anymore. I, 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 I've been to Churches and churches and churches and churches in many different areas of the United States. And I can't see any of them being about God Almighty at all. The church is about the pastor and who he is and what how much he can get from you. It's not about the force and the power of love because I would have known this. Without God having to, it's a shame that God has to tell us these things because church helps no one. It doesn't help. Nobody cares. Nobody follows your your salvation with you. Nobody. There's no. I have absolutely nobody to call. Excuse me to pray with me about anything. No one. I have no one to call. At all. Out of all the churches I've been to, I have absolutely no one to call when I need to pray, prayer, when I need fellowship. I don't want fellowship with people that just ain't with it. That's not on the level of really pleasing God because we think, well, people, people can think that a lifetime is a long time to do the right thing. A lot of people think they're they're going to fail and they can't make it. You won't make it without God, but you will make it with God. But to make it with God, you must do your utter best to try to. You can't be saved and then think, okay, that's it. I'm saved for the rest of my life. And then be influenced by evil spirits or evil people or evil forces. That, that's not what you call salvation. Salvation, you have to work out your salvation. That means keep praying. Keep living for God. Look for milestones in your salvation. 
stepping stones to get better and better. You don't sit stagnant in salvation and expect that when Jesus come in the sky that you going up there. I suspect even right now that because I'm talking about this and the power and the force of love that could stop me from cursing and my other sins and my other bad ways. I suspect that would get me in heaven if Jesus should come right now. Even though I have not gotten a handle on it at all. I suspect, I feel like Jesus wants to find us doing his will when he comes here. Because who's going to be perfect? <laughs> I heard Tony Evans on the, uh, on a, uh, when he was preaching one day say something about why God loves sinners. Because there's no other kind of people. <laughs> Tony Evans, shout out to you. You are all right with me. But anyways, God's love is power. And that power becomes a force when, ne when necessary. God exists in his love. He's perfect in his love. The love is so huge, y'all. That nothing can overcome it. Nothing can conquer it. If you really think about that and meditate on it and pray to God about it, he'll show you what I mean. Even though I believe in my heart, you get it. But you you want, want to live it. You want to exist in that love. You want to exist inside of it. And so do I. So I decree, decree and declare that today all of us who love the Lord will live and exist in his love. In the power of it and in the force of it. And that's what makes us able to drive away demon forces. It's the power of love. Of God's love. I, will, I never want to leave God out of it. Because without God there is no love. Without God, there's not one good thing. And there'll never be a time without God. So, God is always. And God is good. And I'm grateful for that. But I decree and declare right now that we'll all live and exist in God's love. In the name of Jesus Christ, God. Thank you. Amen. We will get there. And we will try. Together, we can try. We need to be able to help each other. We need to really work on being a brotherhood, you know, and being in one accord in love, in the power and the force of it, because it's a mighty strong force. That's why God is just sits in heaven and, and his love makes him able to know us all intimately. Know the hairs, the number of the hair that fell out of your head the other day. The Lord is vast and mighty and powerful. And an awesome terror when you're on the other side on his, you know, of him. Praise the Lord God for this talk about love. And I pray that you allow me to talk about one more thing in Jesus' name. Yeah, that was only 18 minutes. So wait a minute, you guys. I had something to say the other day. And this one was the one that I put off until I feel like God should tell me when to talk about it. I was watching, you know, I watch the, the people on YouTube who call themselves prophetesses and evangelists and prophets and, you know, God's people. I know how to discern when they start to fall off and when they start to change and go a little berserk. I could see you guys in you that the devil, and namely my sister, because we're major components. We're major players in this, this situation here on the earth right now. It's like I've been put out on front street by her, by the devil, and by God. And my biggest in adversary is my sister Debbie, right? Now, I feel like I'm on front street. And if I feel like I'm on front street, how, you must be feeling like that too. You who are saved and working your salvation out, right? But I can clearly see 
maybe this is God's doing. Through the people that are prophesying about God on YouTube, that you're changing. You're letting that devil infiltrate your heart and infiltrate your spirit. I see it clearly. When somebody's for me, that devil, my sister, and any other devil, is swaying you, pulling you to her side. Where now you're sitting in your cars and talking because you know she keeps banishing my cars and using other people. She has caused people not to want to hire me to work anywhere. And she's overall trying to ruin my life. And make me have no life. While in the meantime, mind you, she wants everything. She wants everything in the world. But anyway, I can clearly see where she gets to you so much. She bothers you so much about me. That you tend to sway into that direction. Let me tell you that little sway. That, like Tony ever said again. That two degrees off course. As long as it's two degrees off course, the more off course you go, them two degrees become really, really big, real wide. I can see you, and I'm going to pray for you, God. In the name of Jesus Christ, the people, God, who are trying to please you and live for you, Father God, the devil is after them like he is after me. Father, I pray their strength in the Lord. I pray their strength in your love. I pray that they learn how to use your love power as a force against evil and not succumb to it, not be bent by it. It doesn't make sense. In God, in the name of Jesus, I pray. I pray for them because I love them. Amen. It doesn't make sense for you to be a Christian and not fight against a devil. I know it seems impossible because nobody's ever on your side all the time or anything. And every day you live, the people that you do have anything to do with, you find out that they just insincere all than they have been all along. And they're always doing little things to keep you stuck in, or, or to make you uh, uh, fall. And I understand that there seems to be no one to help you. I understand, because that's me. But I do know, and I expect you to find it out, because if you knew, you wouldn't be changing. I expect you to understand that to call on the name of the Lord is to call upon the, His love power. If you think you can't defeat that devil by yourself, you know you can't. I know you can't. But God can. And when you, you have to pray about him. You can't go through your life being scared to pray against the devil. The, the moment you pray against him, is he's scared. You have to learn how to have courage and pray against the devil. I don't care what devil is. It cannot overtake prayer. It cannot overtake you because you pray. It, it, only if you think and allow that thought can it overtake you. Pray against that spirit. Because I know a whole bunch of you guys I would like to. You know, be able to know and talk about God and have barbecues in the name of Jesus. Which you are my beautiful, great, big, huge patio in the future. And, and, gets, and we all be in one accord toward God. We, I'll never see that day if you guys do not stop the devil from attacking you. You can't stop him, but God's power can. The love of God will, the, his force is a force. It may not seem like it because he's a beast. He's an ignorant, impudent, uh, repeat, uh, repeated the same crime over and over. He's, he's ridiculous, but it is working. It is working, and the only reason he's repeating the crime is to keep you, your mind from knowing that every prayer is working. Every prayer against him is working. Don't let it do that. Stop thinking you can't pray against an evil person.
Stop thinking that they gonna hear your prayers and they're gonna stop. They're gonna curse you some more. No, they can't curse you no more than you curse. Anytime you think you being cursed more, it's because you are not out. You're not going through that wilderness. That is the wilderness. When you feel like you curse so curse so bad that there's you just never gonna not be cursed. When you get to that point, God will show the devil something else. Yeah, God, I, I can say, I can truly say, not just from my experience in the wilderness, but from looking and reading the Bible and other people's experiences, that God lets you go down to the ground. He let the, the devil take you down. Because he wants you to know that the devil is more powerful than you. The day you accept that, and the day you pray against him is the day you rise. You get up and you start. I know the devil is going to. He wants to really just pulverize us. Trip us up. Get us to fall on the ground and pulverize us while we're down. Exactly what he does. Exactly. Exactly what I've been through. Exactly. You got to understand he did it to Jesus Christ. And Jesus is alive and well. That's exactly what he did to the Lord, y'all. And we're not going to escape that. But once we go on, just gone, and keep praying and believing, we get up. We rise again, too. We become resurrected, just like Jesus did. Don't think that wilderness is there to embarrass you, because it is an embarrassing spot. You know, the whole world against you and people talking about you and talking about they got you and you defeated and you ain't nothing and God ain't nothing. It ain't you that they they hate anyway. It's God they hate. God in you, they hate it because it shines a light and the light people can see them. Matter of fact, the light shows themselves to themselves. <laughs> so they really hate you. And they're going to hate you. And that's just the way it is. But don't be afraid to be in the wilderness. Go Because even in the wilderness, what God does to your spirit and to your man, your man person, and the, and the changes he makes in that man person, my God is so much more than what the devil be doing. It just won't look like it because the devil has that power to make people think. That they're just less than, they're just crumb, they're just nobody, absolute nothing. You know why the devil has that power? Because that's exactly what he is. That's all he is. That's what he exudes. And anytime he touches your life, that's all you're going to feel like. But it's not true. <laughs> and it's not true. For reasons unknown, God allows us. Reasons unknown. But I do know what the outcome of it is. That you're a better person. And you are acceptable. You have acceptability for the kingdom of God. So go on through that wilderness. That was not what I want to talk about. But you know how God is. He knows what he does. <laughs> and the power of love. Glory to your glove God. Glory to your name. In the name of glory to Jesus Christ. And the Holy Spirit. Glory be to God. I did want to talk about this. The reason I veered off into the prophetesses because and and the uh, you know the spiritual talkers. Uh, one day I was watching prophetess. I'm almost finished. Prophetess Angela Glass, Angela Glassby, and she was talking about a friend she knows that he's really made it big and he's got a lot of money, and somehow or another the subject or the the event of being coming saved. And believing in Jesus and turning his life over has come into the picture, right? She was talking about how the money is is stopping him from doing that. I don't know who this person is, but she was just discussing it. But I'm here to help her tell the person, Sir, God Almighty loves you. I don't know if you're a sir or a girl, but I think you're a guy because of the way she was talking about it. And say him, I guess. I can't remember everything. But I'm here to tell you. Not to let money cause you. 
to lose your soul. Because if you have some money, it is better than being poor, first of all. But money comes and money goes. God can take the money and a blink of an eye. When the snap of a finger, you, it can be gone. And what do you have then? Nothing. You have you have to build the foundation within yourself. That if money goes, you won't. You won't. That you you've seen a lot of people commit suicide when they lost all their money and their businesses crash or whatever. You the people commit suicide. You don't want to do that, sir. You're more than your money, and God is calling you. Be grateful. To God, at least give God some glory and answer his call because he has made you, put you in a position to have a lot of money. I'm sitting here poor and broke and no one will help me. So, I would feel so much more blessed if I had your money or some money to make a business so I could keep making money and never be broke again, right? But sir, don't let the, don't think that your power and prestige and the admiration of other people will wane because you found the Lord. The people that admire you right now only admire your money. They don't really care for you. Especially if you black. You really ain't don't mean anything. And all the white women gonna come for you because they know that they can make you or force you or entice you to be with them because black people are so afraid to step to white people and be a man or a woman for their own cause so no you're not all that God is please acknowledge God so you can keep your money because you can end up like me you don't want that do you I mean oh my god this is just like the worst if it wasn't for God sustaining me, I'd, I'd rather just crawl up and die myself. And I'm not finished reading what I said. And if I was not saved and I had homes, jobs, cars, security, and God called for me, I'd answer because I would probably be past poverty and waiting for God's provision. I don't know where that came from because that don't sound right. But in that, I see that you have to answer God. You, you have to answer him. God is not going to ask you to give your money away. God is not going to ask you to drop your friends just like that. God is smooth. God is love. God is a force. A force of love can defeat all evil. Give your money to God and give, give your life and your money to God. So you can keep it. That's what I got to say. And you already are a step ahead. Because we are born. Actually born. We, we've given life by God to serve him. And his people. And you already can. When you. If you give your life to Christ. And you really. When you start loving. The fact that you're saved. Then you're going to want to expand. And do more for others. You're going to be able to. Because you got the, the provision right now. I want to do more for so many others. But I don't have provision. I'm not asking you for money. I'm not asking you to feel sorry for me. But if you want to. That's all good. But. You are already equipped. To do things for people. That they can't do for themselves. Out of the love that you will have. In Christ. And if. There's any guarantee of maintaining status and cash. It's to give it to God. It's to do for, give your life to Christ and do the will of the Father who is in heaven. He and your rewards will be so great. You you will see so much money, honey. That that little bit you got right. That money there's a lot right now, but it'll be a little bit. If you only love the Lord. If you only turn your life over to Christ. And now I'm telling everybody that's listening. That everybody 
can have provision. Even if you got l little money. Anybody that's whatever people have that's listening to me right now have much more than I got. I live on a, a monthly income right now. And can't seem to get my business started. I don't have enough money for equipment and, and products. You know, I just, it's just it's such a snail's pace. Because I got to wait once a month to get something. To do something with, right? But I'm not complaining. I am. I do complain and tell God that, you know, Lord, when when you provide for me where well, I can provide for myself. But maybe that's the wrong thing. But that's a, my that's my personal journey with God and whatever he's doing he's doing I, I trust him and I'm not sitting back being lazy not trying and not thinking of stuff to do but God knows what he's doing but anyways I want to you guys that want to know the power of the force that's in love in God's love that nothing can defeat you when you're in that love all those who would like to be in that love, all you have to do is turn your life over to Christ. Let Christ be the head of your life and save you from this world. Save you from being afraid of the devil and witches and curses. Because the power of love is a force that it cannot penetrate. And now if this is you, I need you. To pray this prayer with me. Become a saved person. And your journey starts from there. In the power of love. Bow your heads everybody. Close your eyes. And mean this. As you repeat after me. Lord. I know you sent Jesus Christ to the earth. To save us. From our sins. Jesus said. Is it easier to say. I save you from your sins. Or heal you. Either one is the same. It's one and the same with Jesus. So you sent Jesus to save us from our sins. We also know that to be saved, God, we have to believe that you raised Jesus from the dead. We believe that. We know that you sent Jesus to the earth to save us. And we believe that you raised Jesus from the dead when he was crucified right here on earth. And so, God, I've met the criteria. I need your love in my life. And I ask you to save me in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And now every time I say that prayer on this on my videos, I feel the power. I feel the power of the Lord Jesus Christ. I feel the power of God. And I feel the power now of love. All because God told me last night that that is how I will be able to pray for my enemies. Right now, God. I pray for every enemy that's on this earth. In the name of Jesus Christ. I don't know what you want me to pray for him. But I pray for him God. What it is you want me to pray. Please accept that as my prayer. Right now. In Jesus name. Amen. Thank you Lord God. And I'm so glad you guys. That God didn't give me specific things to pray for my enemy. Because then. I mean I'm spoiled rotten in the Lord. Really spoiled. Because then I wouldn't want it to do it. I would have done it. Just, that's why I'm spoiled. Because I, God knows I would have done it. So I'm spoiled. And I want you spoiled too. Believe that. But I may not have wanted to pray for my enemies. If God hadn't done what he just did. He showed me the power of love. The force of love. And this video will be... Name the force of love in Jesus' name. I'll see you guys later, and I pray that you're safe. And you get a Bible, look through it, read it, read a verse every day until you get grow bigger and bigger in verses and 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 memory and and in the love of it all. The the love of God is right in the Bible. All you gotta do is get past the truth of it. You know where it hurts, but. If you just do that, that's over. Just like that. That doesn't hurt anymore. Just like that. The rest is all cake. <laughs> so in Jesus' name, I'm glad you visited me today. And I bless you guys. And I'll see you again next time. God bless you from Bible Talk with Carolyn B.